Chapter 3 The Angel's Generosity As Amin had anticipated, he and Mahiru had returned to being nothing more than two people who attended the same school. He'd been feeling much better the following day and had happened to run into Mahiru when he went out to shop at the convenience store, but they hadn't said very much to each other. Amin did catch that Mahiru looked a little relieved to see him, well on his way to recovery. Nothing changed back at school on the following Monday, either. The two were back to being strangers. The only tiny difference was that now, whenever they encountered each other on the way to school, she would greet him with a quick bow. That was all. Oh, Amin, you feeling better? I'm good, thanks. It seemed that Itsuki had also been worried about Amin. He'd been in rather bad shape last Friday, after all. Amain's condition had been the first thing Itsuki asked about when they saw each other outside the school building. Itsuki had even sent Amain a text over the weekend, you're not dead, right? Amain had sent back a message that he was fine, but it seemed Itsuki had only been half convinced, because he let out a deep sigh of relief when he saw in person, how much better his friend was feeling. Yeah, well, when I saw you in such bad shape, even I started to worry, man. It's all good if you're better now. You ought to take better care of yourself. Start by cleaning your room or something. You sound like somebody else I know, Amin quipped. Huh? Nothing. Something happened this weekend that kind of opened my eyes. I'll clean my place up in a few days. Itsuki didn't let up. Nah, man, you got to sort yourself out now. Amin turned away in a huff. It would probably take more than half a day to clean that mess up. Looking exasperated, Itsuki backed off a bit, saying, I mean, you can live however you want, yeah no. But just clear a path you can actually walk through for the next time I come over. I'll deal with it. Wearing a sour face the whole time, Amain changed into his indoor shoes and headed for his classroom. An extremely boisterous room caught his attention as he walked down a hall, however, and he couldn't help but peek in. Glancing in through a hallway window, Amain saw Mahiru, as beautiful as she'd ever been, surrounded by her classmates. Whenever someone spoke to her, she would turn to them with a quiet smile, everything about her persona seemed totally different from the Mahiru he'd seen the other day. Amain suddenly broke out in a smile. Noticing his friend's gaze, Itsuki's eyes followed the same path. He saw Mahiru and immediately understood. She Ina, huh? As popular as always. No surprise, given how pretty she is. Well, you know what they say. She's an angel. What about you, Itsuki? Think she's cute? Amain asked. Yeah, I guess so. But I've got Kai, so only in a sort of aesthetic appreciation type way, Itsuki replied. Quit going on about your girlfriend already. Itsuki had a girlfriend named Kai although that was a nickname. Her full name was Chitas Shairakawa. They were an extremely close couple, madly in love with each other, it gave Amin heartburn whenever he saw them together, although Amin was quick to dismiss the girlfriend talk, Itsuki didn't seem particularly offended. Amin often said things like that, so Itsuki just laughed. You're heartless. So let me ask you, do you think she's cute, Amin? She's definitely beautiful, but that's all answered Amin. How bland, Itsuki commented. She's like a flower on a high peak that my hand could never reach. I've got nothing to do with her. Looking is enough. Fair. Some quirk of fate may have brought Mahiru and Amin together that other day, but they were truly destined to live in different worlds. The idea that Amin, a self-admitted hopeless loser, and Mahiru, the beautiful super student who could do anything, might one day have any kind of relationship, let alone a romantic one, was frankly ridiculous, it was a veritable impossibility. That's right, Amain thought. There's no need to concern myself with her any further. What are you eating? The theory that the two would never interact again was quickly disproven. Amain was sucking down some nutritional jelly on his veranda while gazing up at the sky when Mahiru called to him. It had been too much of a bother to even go to the convenience store, so he was contenting himself with the pouch of jelly he had at home while getting some air when Mahiru unexpectedly came out onto her own veranda. She leaned over her railing slightly, looked at the nutritional jelly pouch that was in a mane's mouth, 
and frowned. For a moment, Amin was frozen, he'd thought she was done with him. Can't you see? It's a ten-second energy replenishment jelly, he finally answered. Don't tell me that's what you're calling dinner? Mahiru asked, incredulous. Of course it is. That's all you're eating? A high school boy, with a healthy appetite. That's none of your business. Normally, a man would have eaten a boxed meal from the convenience store or something pre-made from the supermarket, but today, he'd neglected to pick something up for dinner, and he didn't feel like instant Raymond, so this was all he had. It probably wouldn't be enough, though, so he planned on having a snack later, too. I guess I don't need to ask whether you can cook for yourself. It definitely doesn't seem like you can, at least. And yet you're living on your own, even though you can't cook or clean. Mahiro's observation was brutally honest. Shut up. That's none of your business, Amin fired back, though he knew he couldn't argue with the truth. He frowned and finished off the remainder of his jelly. He'd wised up about cleaning his place a couple days ago and was definitely planning to do something about it sometime soon. Ruminating on Mahiro's scolding only seemed to make Amin want to do it less. However, it also made him wonder why she was making such a fuss over him in the first place. Mahiru just stared at Amin, then let out a soft sigh. Wait here, she instructed before disappearing back into her own apartment. What now? Amin grumbled as he listened to the clatter of the glass door closing behind her. He'd been told to wait, but he didn't know what for. Turning a puzzled gaze toward Mahiru's apartment, Amin stood there obediently but there was no immediate answer. It's starting to get chilly out here, I'd like to go inside, but he'd been told to stay put, so that was what he'd do. The autumn evening was colder than expected, and Amain's loosely fitting, casual clothes did little to help him stay warm. As Amain waited, watching his deep breaths come out white in the cold, he heard the electronic bell chime from his front door, announcing a visitor. It was pretty obvious who it was. Truly puzzled, Amin made his way toward the front door, dodging scattered clothes and magazines on the floor. He knew who it was without even looking through the peephole, so he slid his feet into a pair of slippers, took the chain off the door, and opened it. As expected, he came face to face with waves of sandy blonde hair. What are you, doing? Amin asked. I couldn't stand how badly you were neglecting your health. These are just some leftovers I had but please take them, Maharu stated plainly as she abruptly stuck a hand out in front of her. In her delicate palm, somewhat smaller than a main zone, was a plastic container. He could vaguely see some sort of stewed dish through the semi-transparent lid. He couldn't tell exactly what it was, however, as the container had filled with steam from the warmth of the food. Maharu seemed to understand the confused look in Amain's eyes as he stood there blinking. She let out a deep sigh. You're not eating properly. Nutritional supplements are just that, supplements. You can't live on them alone. What are you, my mom? Amin jeered. I believe what I said is common sense. Also, shouldn't you have tidied up your room by now? There still isn't any room to walk. Mahiru narrowed her eyes in obvious disappointment as she looked past Amin at the room beyond, and Amin's words stalled in his throat. I have, a little. No. You haven't. Normally, people don't drop their clothes on the floor. Those just dot fell there. That wouldn't happen if you washed, dried, folded, and put them away properly. Also, you should bundle up your magazines after you're done reading them. That way you won't slip on one and fall. It wasn't that he couldn't sense the small bobs in her words, but he also understood that Maharu was, for some reason, genuinely concerned for him so he couldn't dismiss everything she was saying. After all, the clutter of magazines had almost tripped the, both of them up just the other night. She had a point. Amin had no rebuttal. He screwed up his face, squeezed his mouth shut tight, and sullenly took the container from Mahiru's hand. The food suffused his palm with a welcome warmth, especially after all the time spent standing on his chilly veranda. So I can eat this? Amin asked. If you don't need it, I can throw it out, Mahiru answered, flatly. No, I'm grateful for it. I don't usually get to eat an angel's home cooking. Stop calling me that, 
seriously. Using her school nickname was a kind of petty, needling revenge for her critical comments. Her feelings about the moniker were written clearly across her pale cheeks as they turned red. There was no doubt about it, she hated being called an angel. Were he in the same position, Amin was certain he would hate it, too. That hardly needed to be said. Despite understanding Mahiro's stance, Amin couldn't help but smile when he saw her looking up at him with flushed cheeks and tiny, bitter tears forming. I'm not going to say I'm sorry, he declared. It was clear that any further teasing would be certain to wreck what little goodwill she had left for him, so Amin figured it was prudent to give it a rest. We're not even that close. Mahiru also seemed not to want to hear any more, and she emphasized this by clearing her throat forcefully as she pulled herself together. Her cheeks were still tinged with red, though, so she didn't look like much had changed. Well, thank you for this. Though, you don't really need to worry about what happened before, Amin said. I don't. I considered that debt, settled. This is for my own self-satisfaction. I saw that you weren't taking care of yourself, and I was concerned, that's all. Of course. Mahiru pitied him, that was it. There was no way to hide, she'd gotten a very good look at how he lived the other night. Even now, she could see the garbage piled up in the hallway behind him. You need to at least start eating proper meals and not get your life, together. She scolded. Yes, mom, Amin answered sarcastically. He was getting a little tired of listening to Mahiru's nagging. Amin churlishly carried the meal Mahiru had brought him back into his apartment. He grabbed a pair of disposable chopsticks he'd gotten at the supermarket and sat down on his living room couch, eager to sample the flavors of her cooking. He remembered enjoying the rice, porridge that she'd brought him before, even though his sense of taste had been dulled by sickness. The slow-cooked porridge had possessed rich, comforting taste that had been gentle on his stomach. If that was any indication, Mahiru's cooking was undoubtedly quite good, but now it was time to find out for sure. As he hastily opened the lid of the container, the savory scent of stew drifted, gently, up at him. Various root vegetables had been cooked together with some chicken. The light-colored sauce underscored the vibrant hues of carrots and green beans, all of which had been cut into bite-sized pieces. Amain's stomach growled, reminding him that the only thing he'd had to eat was some nutritional jelly. He hastily snapped his disposable chopsticks apart and brought a piece of daikon, radish to his mouth. Yum! Amain's mouth was greeted with a complex flavor. Typical of the health-conscious Mahiru, the dish was only lightly seasoned, spiced mostly with dashi stock. It was immediately obvious that she hadn't used store-bought, granulated dashi. Instead, she'd made it herself using with dried bonito fish and kombu seaweed. The difference in taste was night and day. As he chewed, it thoroughly, the flavor of the dashi and the other seasonings, as well as the taste of the vegetables, spread gently through his mouth. Amin had never been a fan of veggies. He usually went out of his way to avoid them, but in this dish, the essence of each ingredient came together in perfect harmony, and Amin happily savored them all. There wasn't much chicken. Perhaps Mahiru had done that on purpose as if to tell him to eat more vegetables. What little meat there was had been cooked plump and juicy. There was nothing to complain about there, Amin thought, aside from the quantity. For something made by a high school girl, the ingredients were a little plain, but her skill more than made up for it. That Amin so readily enjoyed the food was enough of a testament to that fact. It would have been even better with some rice, and maybe some miso soup or clear broth on the side, but Amin didn't have any prepared. He was all out of rice anyway, so that modest wish was not destined to be granted that night. It was too late now, but he regretted not buying any instant rice packets beforehand. That angel's amazing, Amin said to himself as he devoured the perfectly seasoned, vegetables, chopsticks never slowing for a second. To think, she's great at school, and sports, and all kinds of housework. If Mahiru had been there to hear Amin's praise, she would have hated it. Here's this pack. The food was good. The following evening, Amin carried the borrowed container over to Mahiru's apartment. The boy was certainly bad at housework, but not so bad that he couldn't wash something before giving it back. 
In his hand, he held the carefully clean little box, knowing that it was good manners to return it only after it had been thoroughly washed and dried. Mahiru had appeared the moment Amin rang the doorbell without even checking to see who it was, as if she'd been expecting him. She was wearing a wine-colored knit dress, and when she saw her visitor, her eyes narrowed gently. She quickly checked the container and said, You washed it and everything, huh? Look at you. Amin frowned slightly when she praised him like a little child. Well, thank you for taking the time, Mahiru continued. Now take this. She pressed a new, warm container into Amin's hand. From what he could tell, there was sautéed pork and eggplant inside. It seemed to have cooled, enough that the lid hadn't fogged up, for Amin could clearly spy the color of eggplant, grilled pork, and sprinkled sesame seeds through the clear top. From the color, he guessed the sauce was probably miso flavor. The sight of the eggplant with slight scorch marks and the lustrous pork definitely roused his appetite. No one would deny that it looked delicious, but Amin couldn't understand why, he'd been handed dinner again. No, um, I just came to return the container, he tried to explain. This is today's dinner, Mahiru answered coolly. Yeah, I get that, but. I just want to ask, you don't have any allergies, do you? Don't get the wrong idea, though. I won't be catering to your tastes or anything. I don't, but. I mean. I can't accept your food again. Taking a portion of the girl's dinner for the second time in a row seemed wrong to Amin. His malnourished body was grateful for the food, and Mahiru was clearly a much better cook than other girls her age, and the meal he was holding was sure to be delicious, but it also held no small amount of danger. If someone from school saw the two of them meeting like this, it could turn into a big debacle. That would be the end of Amin's quiet student life for sure. These apartments were meant for single occupancy, but the rent was pretty high because of the building's location and the amenities. Amin had never seen another student from their school in the building, except Mahiru, of course, so he was probably worrying over nothing. Even with that mild consolation, his brief meetings with the angel still made him wary. I made too much, so I'm just happy to be rid of it, Mahiru explained. In that case, I'm happy to take it. But someone might get the wrong idea, since people usually do this sort of thing for someone they like, Amin said sheepishly. And do you have the wrong idea? Uh, I guess not. One look at Mahiru's expression was enough to clear up any misconceptions about her feelings toward Amin. There was no way that a beautiful, talented girl like Mahiru could possibly fall for an oblivious slob like Amin. Sure. A cute next-door neighbor bringing him food seemed like something out of a romantic comedy, but there was no romance here, and certainly no comedy. The situation was as devoid of those elements as Amain's own apartment was devoid of rice. What kindness existed in the angels, barbed words had been born only from pity. Well then, there's no problem, is there? And anyway, it looks like you were surviving on convenience store meals and side dishes from the supermarket stated Mahiru. How could you tell? Amain asked. It's not hard to see that your kitchen has barely been used, and you have a ton of disposable chopsticks from the convenience store in the supermarket, on your desk. Besides, I can tell just by looking at you. You've got an unhealthy complexion. Amain's expression froze. Mahiru had gotten all that just from one visit to his apartment. Everything she'd said had been spot on, he had no room to argue. All right, I'll be going. Mahiru bowed and went back inside her apartment, having said what she'd wanted to say and given him what she'd wanted to give. Amin looked at the container in his hands as he listened to the jangling sound of the chain on the other side of Mahiru's front door slide into place. The heat from the food was beginning to warm the palms of his hands. He let out a soft sigh and returned to his place. As expected, the stir-fried sesame miso eggplant and pork was delicious. Amin found himself wishing even more than yesterday that he'd bought some rice. As time went on, Amin began swapping an empty container for a full one every day, and his diet improved dramatically. Mahiru's cooking was always light and healthy, and since every dish made him want rice, Amin started fixing microwave packets with each meal. The angel had a variety of cuisines in her repertoire, Japanese, 
Chinese, even Western. Each day, brought something new, but every single meal was delicious, and Amin developed an appetite like never before. Like a wild animal grown fat on handouts, Amin quickly came to rely on Mahiru's charity. Even as he continued to obediently accept container after container, he knew it was presumptuous to expect a meal every day. Still, he happily, and hungrily, licked his chops each time. You're looking good lately. You fix your diet or something? Itsuki took a long, hard look at Amin one day during lunch. Apparently, his complexion had improved, probably because he was finally supplying his body with much needed nutrition. Amin knew his friend was perceptive, and he felt a bit of a cold sweat break out as he slurped the udon noodles he'd ordered for school lunch. Itsuki, you scare me, he said. Why's that? Do you mean I'm right? Uh, well, I guess you could say I've had no choice but to re-examine my lifestyle recently. Whenever Ramain passed by Mahiru near their apartments, she would chide him gently to take care of himself, and she was regularly sharing her dinner with him. It was only natural that his life had improved. On the one hand, he wanted to call her his guardian angel, but a small part of him also felt like she was meddling where it was none of her business. Amin had indirectly confirmed Itsuki's suspicions by dodging the question, and Itsuki cackled with delighted laughter. Yeah, I knew it. You always looked unhealthy cause the way you were living was so crappy. Shut up. But what made you decide to re-examine your lifestyle? I guess I was forced to. Ah, your mom found out? You're not, right, but you're not far off, either. Mahiru really did sound like Amin's mom at times. She was much too young and too cute to be a mother, though. Still, the way the girl went to such lengths to care for Amin made it hard for him to refuse her. Say, Itsuki? Do I really seem that unhealthy? Mm. Well, to start with, you're pretty pale. I guess you're tall enough, but you're gangly. You're also always shuffling around all apathetic-like, so you look like a zombie. But that's just how I look. You think I don't know that? Try looking like one of the living for a change. Don't be absurd. Wait, but seriously dot a zombie. Amin wasn't really sure because he almost never bothered to closely check his own face in the mirror, but apparently, he gave others the impression that he was, barely alive. If he looked half dead even on a good day, that would explain why Mahiru had been so worried about him before. You should pay a little more attention to how other people see you, Amin. You're always hunched over, staring at the ground. It makes you hard to approach, and it's not like you go out of your way to get close to anybody, either. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you're the very definition of a moody teenager. You sure know how to keep it casual when you're insulting a guy. Fine, fine, I won't sugarcoat it, then. You look like a corpse, and your life is a mess. Itsuki continued teasing his friend insisting that he ought to take this opportunity to pay more attention to his appearance and demeanor, not to mention 